This programme is brought to you by UCKG. Welcome to the Love Talk Show. Yes, and we are here today to bring to you a very important topic because we're going to speak about routine, Anna, in the relationship. And we could say that our good routines, which are very important, actually, for relationships to grow and to be happy, but we have to avoid the bad routines, the same old, same old which is really a poison to many relationships. So, ideally, we want to bring to you today tips on how to adopt the good ones and at the same time avoid the bad ones that can spoil the relationship altogether. Many couples are lost because they are focused just on the now, forgetting to do different tomorrow. For instance, uh, the husband comes home from work, goes straight into his shower, comes out, gives the wife a, a brief kiss on the cheek and say, hi, everything okay? She says, fine. He sits down on the couch, opens his book, she's cooking, she's cooking the dinner. They sit at the table and then barely talk. He's checking his emails, she is there just eating. The children are there maybe too. And this goes on for one day and the other and the other. As this is something that starts to happen every day, a distance begins to appear. This distance will open doors to other problems and sometimes serious ones, as we see nowadays. Betrayal, divorce, separation, bad communication, all this stemmed from bad routines. So to start our show, let's check what people on the streets are talking about today's topic. Um, routines in a relationship. It becomes boring because it's the same old thing, one like again and again and again. There's nothing new, there's nothing, you know, to keep. You know, like, for example, you have a plant and you add water to the plant and then it, you know, it grows, etc. When you keep adding to a relationship, it will start to grow. But when there's nothing new being added, you know, it will it will sooner or later die. I think to, to overcome or to to avoid getting into bad routines. Communication is definitely something that we need to do. Um, as far as good routines, um, I think that comes with consistency and discipline. So once people get into a good routine or once a couple are in good routines, like seeing each other every day or speaking to each other or messaging each other, um, then they, they have that form of routine. So that will come with discipline. That requires consistency. So I think if people just get into good habits and... Um, consistently you work on it then that will have a positive impact on the relationship as well. I think the best thing for me in a relationship is to have routine and then break that routine when it's the least unexpected. If you're not spending time with your partner then they might feel that you don't love them anymore or you know uh, it can make you feel a bit insecure and, uh, and that can make you feel a bit resentful to that person. So they're kind of bad things that would happen. If you're wondering how to change the bad routine, people in the streets already gave you some advice and we are going to give you some more. First, you need to start planning today. Stop doing the usual things. Plan some trip, take your partner out for a dinner. There's plenty of things, plenty of ideas you can choose from, but we'll talk more about it after the break. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Today's show is about bad routine. Bad routine might slowly kill your relationship. When you look carefully, you might find yourself wasting too much time on silly things instead of spending time together and doing something that would really benefit the couple. No one likes to be in a bad routine, but they still are. That's because in order to break it, 
you need discipline. And that's what we're going to see now, Anna, because we have here some practical tips on what people can do to break their bad routine. Would you like to talk about the first one? The first one is start with small changes. If you are in a bad routine, don't, don't expect everything is going to change at once. It starts with small gestures, like leave some notes, uh, send flowers, walk in the park. Many couples, and they feel overwhelmed because they think everything has to change at once, and it doesn't work like that. In order to achieve big changes, as you're saying, we start with the small ones, right? You don't have to take a long journey, you know, in one step. Little steps towards what you want to see in your relationship. I have the second one now, which is very important. Please do this, take a break from technology. Listen, I'm all for technology. I love technology, but even good things can be too much at times. Too much of a good thing can sometimes become a bad thing. And it's important that you put that mobile phone away, close the screen of the laptop, Turn off the TV, disconnect from the virtual world. Even if you say, Edward, but I cannot do it, I'm too busy. If you cannot find time to deal with your relationship, you're going to have to find time to deal with your problems. Which one is better? If you don't want to deal with the problem, so probably the problem will prevail and hurt your relationship. So it's important that you need to have your time together and uh, that the couples, you know, they do set time apart to be away from everything else just they, so they can have their, you know, time together just for themselves, to be in their own world. Have you noticed that these days, nowadays, people, they don't look at the people's eyes, yeah. <laughs> even the partner. It's Sometimes they are in the restaurant and they are on their phones, their iPads. But I noticed this, that people, they don't look anymore in people's yeah. eyes. People can be sitting down together sometimes for a one whole hour, having a meal without even having any kind of interaction. That's, that's just sad. terrible. That's, that's, a, yeah, sad. that's a sad thing. You have the third tip, yeah? Go on in a spontaneous day out. What about surprise your partner? Pick them up at work for coffee, to the cinemas, uh, walk in the park. So it's up to you. Surprise your partner. You know, sometimes, and uh, uh, this may be like a sacrifice, because sometimes you find couples that enjoy going out. Others, you know, sometimes one does enjoy and the other one don't, doesn't. I mean, so uh, it, it, he might like to stay more at home and watch TV or read his book, but it's important to do not only what one likes in the relationship, but to also see what the other one enjoys. and, and To come and to a balance, right? Absolutely. To enjoy the time with each absolutely. other. Absolutely. And, and what first, and not be grumpy about it, right? Not say, yeah. okay, you wanna go, okay. Because it, it, it's gonna spoil, you're gonna spoil everything the if time. you do that, right? Yes. So this is important, go out on a spontaneous um, day together, all right? So the next tip is, Organize a trip as a couple. This is something that the two of you together can do, but not to argue over it for the love of God, please. To agree, to see different sides, negotiate. Maybe it's not going to be the trip that you would like, but the trip that she or he would like. Negotiate on that. And when we say trip, it doesn't... Sometimes, Anna, it's a trip to, to the museum. <laughs> it's a trip to the cinema. We're not necessarily saying, because someone can say, but I cannot afford to go on a trip. It doesn't have to be anything far away or expensive. It can be a trip to the shopping center, you know. But it's important to organize together sometimes, sit down and say, hey, what are we going to do? Uh, this is a good routine, we could say, and to break the bad one of never doing it, never and organizing things together. if they think, when was the last time that they did that? Mm. Maybe many mm. years ago, huh? yeah. or think maybe they never did. Yes, that's right. It will be a great thing to do. You have the next step. Plan your financial life. You know, uh, for a couple, it's very important uh, you have a financial life that both are in the same page. So you should uh, talk about and for future plans, plans for 
to buy a house, plans to buy a car, to have uh, projects for the future. Yeah, sometimes, you know, couples struggle with this because one is very controlling. Uh, it's always his way. It's usually the man, could be the woman too, but he never trusts the, the woman to have her say. And she says, listen, but what? You know, I need to buy this. We need to, to pay for that. No, 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 I know what I'm doing. No, we're not gonna do this. So he, he completely disregards whatever she has to say. That's not only a bad routine, but it goes beyond that. That goes into, into the problem of, of dismissing or, or, or not letting the other one have his or her say in the relationship. And it is a problem indeed. Yeah, you have seen many couples that because of they don't plan together uh, financial their financial life, they come to big and huge problems. Yes, in their arguments and, and separation and many problems. So the next tip is maintain a happy and healthy intimacy. Well, this is very important because intimacy, you could say, is the heart of a relationship. When a couple is having their intimacy uh, compromised for whatever issue, health or simple, uh, a simple neglect over this issue, thinking it's not that important, there will be many other issues because, Anna, it's even scientifically proven that sex in the marriage extends the physical life. It's a very healthy, a practice and it cannot be neglected. Couples sometimes have serious problems because they go into a bad routine of not coming together, or not having intimacy anymore, of not trying to find out if the other one is happy with their intimacy. This is something that cannot happen in a relationship. Yeah. I would say that uh, intimacy in, in a marriage is a, the communication. If you are not having the intimacy, they are not communicating. Yeah. And I'm sure that in the beginning of their relationship, this was uh, one of the first important yes, things, yes. right? And we cannot let time make this no longer important because there will be serious problems if this is not happening. For sure. So the next one is compliment your partner often. Give, give compliments, give, appreciate the qualities. So I'm sure that your relationship is going to be uh, much better. Right? I have to raise my hand here because in our relationship, I believe I was guilty of not complimenting you enough. This was a good routine, a good practice that I did not adopt. It didn't become so bad, right? But I admit that at times, if I had complimented you more, if I had uh, shown that I have noticed, it would make, uh, we could have avoided some problems that we had in the beginning. So this is a very healthy and important, good routine to adopt. Compliment your partner of notice. Sometimes, Anna, they just speak about the problems. They just point out the mistakes. Oh, you're too like this, you have to change. Yeah, I do it because you're like that. But they, they need to also know how to highlight yes. each other's virtues. Sometimes you just want to receive and not to give. Yeah. And so you should give. See if there is not a lack of balance in your personality, where you are very good at pinpointing your partner's mistakes, but very poor at acknowledging your partner's virtues, okay? The next step is cook your own date night recipe. That's very important. I know for some, it may really be stepping out of your comfort zone, but even there are studies that prove that the biggest revolutions we had, the positive ones that brought about big changes, they only happened when someone had the courage or was challenged to step outside their comfort zone. So Anna, when we speak about cooking, for some people, especially, I believe, mostly men, it really is stepping out of their comfort zone. Many men don't like to cook. I, for one, was something that I never imagined myself doing, but I can say that I decided to adopt this good routine. You know, it's not often, but every now and then I do cook a dinner 
and I believe that you do appreciate, right? I really appreciate mm -hmm. the another day that you prepared the dinner it was lovely. So you see, you can do that. that is, and we are talking about easy things, right? Easy things. So it's, it's not, not something complicated, complicated. Too complicated. You know, it doesn't no. have to be a, a a whole table with seven different courses. Put a simple simple dinner together, something simple, easy to cook. There's so many sources today to learn from, right? There's the internet, there's books. So when people do do this, they can really be contributing to their happiness. Yes, that's right. Now, you see some red flags that couples should avoid in order to change their bad routine habits and keep a healthy love life. Having a bad routine can affect all of us. When we choose to ignore the signs or not pay attention to the circumstances, it's really important you are alert with those things because if you notice them, you will know how to improve your relationship. Let's check out some of the red flags to avoid. Husbands watching too much TV is a common complaint from women after a few years of marriage. Is it a problem to watch TV? No, but try not to do it for a long time and to watch something that your wife can enjoy with you. Working too much can negatively impact a marriage. Work is an important part of your life, but it can't be your priority. When you put your job above your marriage, your relationship will suffer. Love is a garden. If you stop watering the plants, it will lose its wonderful flowers. If you stop to give attention to your relationship, it will not survive. If you care, you have to make time. Eating together is time for sharing. It is a time when you don't watch TV, you're not on your mobile phone, and you're not working. Sharing a meal is a chance to talk. It's a vital part of your daily interaction. It enriches your relationship with your partner and with your family. One of the biggest complaints among couples is that after some years together, lack of communication starts to be a part of their lives. When a couple stops talking, everything starts to go wrong. You both need to discuss the couple and family's issues. A relationship is about the thoughts of two people. Listen more than you talk, but talk too. Don't expect your partner to guess what you are thinking. Pressure tends to be off after some years of marriage. Couples that are dating care more about their own body as they want to keep the attention of their partner. Married couples feel more secure, but this can't be the reason to forget to take care of your health and of your physical appearance. Work together to create interesting food options and try to do exercise together. Attraction is one of the keys to a successful marriage. So Anna, I really enjoyed this video of the red flags because for instance, women complaining their husbands watch too much TV. It's important also for the woman to understand that uh, the TV is important for the husband because he needs a moment to unwind. He's a man, he's not a woman. A woman, when she's stressed out, she needs to talk. The last thing a man wants to do when he's stressed out is to talk. So she has to understand he needs his time there to unwind. And the man has to understand he just cannot stay on that mode for too long because it can also become a problem, a bad routine, watching too much TV and completely disconnecting from the wife and everything else, right? And the red flag about the work also, uh, you see, work, everybody has to work, right? But uh, the work is not more important than a relationship. Yeah. If they prioritize a work, one, they, they can get another work, but uh, to find another person for a good relationship is more difficult, Yeah, right? usually people say that family relationships is more important than work, but what they do shows the other yes. way around. That's right. And they neglect also with the appearance. You know, the fact that we are together, the fact that now we love one another, we exchange vows of marriage, is not an excuse to completely disregard the health, uh, the appearance. It's important to to try to look attractive to the other one 
you know, to keep the, the relationship out of the bad routine, right, throughout the relationship. All this is important. So to avoid these red flags the best way you can. Now we're gonna go for a quick break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Until now, we have just spoken about bad routine, but we also have good routine. For example, have dinner together, kiss goodbye, spoil each other, text love messages, and many others. That's right, Anna. And you should definitely keep it. Small things, like telling your partner how much you love them, or maybe when you help each other to tidy up the kitchen after dinner, these things are really good routines to adopt. Let's keep what's good and throw away what's not good for your love life. Now, let's see some examples of couples that have the habit of doing something different in order to avoid the bad routine. We have some pictures here that I would like to share with you. For instance, Anna. Initially, this is something that is almost like cliche. Mm -hmm. Couples, they do give flowers right there especially the, the man will give to the lady. But who is married for, for example, 5, 10, 15 years and is still doing this today? There are, don't get me wrong, there are couples that still do it, but many have forgotten such a small gesture. But it speaks volumes when people, especially when the lady receives flowers. Do you like to receive them? Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. It's not expensive. And if you think, what the, was the last time that a couple did that to each other, right? Yeah, yeah. It's really important that you don't let this die. This is a good routine. It does not necessarily have to be flowers. It could be a box of chocolate, yes. right? If you're cutting back on sugar, <laughs> it could be even a, a card, a nice greeting card. It's not about uh, the, the expense, right? It doesn't have to be a, a special designer's watch or anything like and this. And just to take the time that you're showing that you are thinking about the person. That's the most important thing. It can be even something handmade, right? If that be. Yes. But it's so important that we see that couples keep uh, uh, paying attention. It's small gestures like this. To huh? small acts of kindness. Small acts of kindness can be considered like the the breakfast of every relationship. They say, I'm not sure how accurate is that, the breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Small, constant small acts of kindness are definitely going to bring strength to the relationship. We have another picture here that we'd like to, to look at this. Wow, very nice special. Table. But what makes this really special is that the gentleman Actually, he went and he found this, this tree stump and he cut it and then he made this nice table. He did it and, and he brought it to his partner. Look how nice. What makes it, it's a very beautiful table, right? Yes. But what is so special, imagine the time he had to, to take to cut the, that section of the tree stump to sand it. And to think about the idea to do it, huh? And to be even imagining how, wow, how is she going to feel when she sees, you know, what I, what I did into see her. This, this is not just a, it's not just a furniture to the house, but something that he did to show love, <laughs> to show love. It goes a long way, right? Yes. So, once again, we're not saying that anyone has to be heroic. And not everyone has this skill. By all means, if you don't have the skill of, of woodwork, you're not gonna get some chainsaw yeah, be careful. and find. Please, by all means, we don't want accidents to happen. Don't get hurt. But what the point here we are making, Anna, is the idea of going the extra mile. The idea of doing Take something. Take the time. Right? Yes. Right. This is definitely something that can uh, help make eliminate a, the bad routine. Yeah, make a difference. It does. The next one, why don't you talk about this one? Oh, that uh, shows also that you're thinking about the purse, you take the, your time. I'm sure when we uh, find those notes, you're going to, uh, yeah, wow, he was thinking about me. So it's very nice to, and these, 
I'm sure that in the beginning of the relationship, they used to do this, but along the way, many people, they, they yeah, lost. Become, become complacent, yes. right? And this is actually a picture that someone actually did it. Mm. It's not just something taken from the internet, it's, it's very nice, right? So imagine you wake up in the morning and on the fridge, you find all these notes, you know, from your wife, how would you feel? Uh, I, I can speak for myself. I would feel empowered. Mm-hmm. Hello, handsome. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for dinner. That's probably because I cooked for you last night. Thanks for your support. You see, once again, how hard is it for someone to do this? But the thing is, and there's people, for instance, that they are they are very good with ideas at work. Yeah. You know, they have. They can really think outside the box and they bring to the table so many things, but in their relationship, they're not doing it. They are very busy outside, investing in the work, investing with friends, but they are not investing in their relationship. Because maybe they know that in the competitive world we live in, if you're not thinking outside the box, if you're not bringing something extra, probably you're going to be replaced by someone that's going to do uh, better than you. And if there is a loss when people lose a job, if there is a loss when people um, lose a position, are demoted, I can guarantee you that the loss is much worse, much bigger when someone loses a relationship because of not paying attention to small details. And so many time consuming energy that you put in that relationship, you need to uh, lose everything? No, let's invest now, not lose the things they already uh, earned throughout the relationship. Absolutely right. And now we have something very interesting here because some people, they dared, they were brave to record video questions and send to us. By the way, before we even show the video questions, if you have your own video question or a question in general, just drop us a note here on the screen. It's going to show what can you do here to communicate with us. We would love to hear from you, okay? How can we help you? It will be a pleasure. And if you don't want to show anything on camera, that's fine. It's going to be kept in confidentiality. But we are going to show now some people who are brave to send us videos with the questions about love. Let's see here the first question. What should we do in a relationship when one loves the routine and the other one hates it? Very good question. So when one loves the routine and the other one hates it, right? So in every relationship, Anna, there has to be sacrifice. We have to use this word. I cannot only do what I like. If I'm the kind of person that I only want to do what I like, I want to eat whatever I like, I want to do whatever I like, I will definitely end up with a life that I hate. Because for instance, there's routines that you love and they are not bad ones, they are good routines. And I, for instance, may not necessarily appreciate, I can even share here. For instance, you enjoy going to the museum. It's not the kind of getaway that I really enjoy, but I do it. And it comes with the sacrifice of understanding I cannot only do what I like, I also have to do what you like. Mm -hmm. Later on, I might ask you to come with a routine that I enjoy and you don't. Like to watch football. Right? There are couples that both enjoy it. There are couples where one is completely a fanatic and the other one hates it. But there comes the sacrificial love. Intelligent love comprehends sacrifice. I can not only do what I like. Of course, the other one also has to have the balance of understanding. I mean, this person is already making the sacrifice of enjoying these moments together. Even though I know she doesn't enjoy or like it that much, but she's doing it out of love for me. So the least that I could do is to appreciate it and also maybe extend the same act of kindness. Hey, even though I don't enjoy this this much, but I'm going to go and I'm going to make this experience as much enjoyable as possible, right? And understand the difference and to come to a balance, to... This is a good routine, you see? 
There you go, another good routine here. The routine of making the sacrifice to make your partner happy, even when you yourself don't enjoy that much what she or he enjoys, right? Okay, we have another one there, another video question. So, my question is, what can you help a couple with when they know their relationship is bad? They don't talk about it, they do nothing, they just stay at home. Well, Anna, I'll let you answer this one. <laughs> so, one thing that's worse than uh, fights between uh, the couple is the silence. When they give up on to solve their problems, I, I believe that at least one of the partners needs to uh, ask for help, seek for help, not to be satisfied with the, this kind of life, this miserable life. Because yeah. it, it, it's a question we have to actually find out why are they not talking about it. Is it because when they try to talk about it, the other one gets upset and, and gets aggressive? Is it because they just gotten used to the routine of being quiet but we know that this kind of silence as you're saying is very detrimental because nothing is being resolved uh, there are certain matters that have to be addressed and i say more anna there are people that they don't put up they are not silent about things that are so petty ah you know he left i, I used this example before in, on the show but i'll use it again Oh, because he left the cup that he drank, whatever, with that cup. He left it on top of the sink instead of putting it inside and, and she makes a big deal out of it, right? Or, or the husband who makes a big deal because the wife, you know, came home late five minutes from work. So they make a big deal out of nothing. But the serious things, they should make a big deal, they don't. Many times putting up with abuse, many times putting up with disrespect, many times putting up with cheating in the relationship. These are things that intelligent love does not accept, never, in a million years. So we have to see what is causing the silence, why is the couple not addressing the issue for us to give a better answer. But I can definitely say this, there are certain things that should be easily put up with, easily tolerated, and people make a big deal out of it, and others that should be a big deal because they are, and people just put up with it and do nothing about it. This is something that you need to see how it's working in your relationship, all right? Okay, so we have now another question. Let's see what it is. So a couple who's married for many years, at times they forget to say please and thank you. But though they spend so much time together, it kind of makes sense, but then at the same time, it's a negative habit. So what can a couple do to resolve this issue? I believe they should invest in this part, they should be humble to recognize that can be a problem throughout the years. Because, for example, in the workplace with people outside, we don't forget to say thank you or please. And you should do even show uh, appreciation and love and respect towards also the people that are our, our companion, right? Yeah. Our partner. Uh, these are ingredients that cannot lack in the relationship. Politeness, being polite, uh, approaching with a, a soft approach, uh, hard, hard, uh, better than a harsh one. What do you want? Uh, this kind of thing. This, this cannot be lost with time. On the other hand, I know Anna, that the communication between the couple, it becomes, it, it evolves with time to the point that sometimes you say thank you just not with your mouth. You say thank you with your eyes. You say, you say it's actually better than to just say thank you and, and do other things that show that I'm not appreciative or say please and uh, you know and then not show show a rough character yeah. right so sometimes the person say, says please but in a harsh way yeah so that's that's my point <laughs> you you can say thank you and please without necessarily using these words it doesn't have to be like a mechanical thing oh could you please or oh, thank you no, no. The relationship develops, we get closer to one another, yeah. but it's always important that you communicate, that you really mean what you're saying, that you're really paying attention to what you're listening to. This is really important. A good part of the communication, actually most part of it, is not verbal. It's with our actions, right? So I hope that to answer these questions somehow helped you, inspired you, 
because that's what we aim to do in this segment of Love Talk Show. We'll go now for a break. Stay with us. Dear viewer of the Love Talk Show, did you know that you can watch full-length episodes now via our YouTube channel? All you have to do, Anna, is to find the Love Talk Show YouTube channel, subscribe. You're going to find all our episodes there in full length yes. and you can watch for free. You can even copy the link and share with family and friends. But not only that. You also, in the social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, follow us, like, share and comment. And also don't forget to visit our website lovetalkshow.tv there you're going to find even more information that you will not see here on the TV show and also you can write your questions send us your questions to the email questions at lovetalkshow.tv all right we'd love to hear from you let's continue watching love talk show welcome back we invited a beautiful couple to do something different to get out of their routine let's check it out First of all, I didn't believe much in love. No, it was very hard for me to believe that a relationship, a marriage would work. The examples that I saw in my family, you know, my parents, you know, my uncles and aunties, they were all very disappointing. And I thought it would be best for me to be alone, for me to, to have my own life, have my own things and, and share my time with myself. You no, know, I was very uh, individualist. I liked to to be by myself, to go to the movies by myself, I was, I was happy with that, I was used to that. But deep inside I knew there was something, something missing. There were times that it was hard, I wanted to share something, I would to, to, to do something with someone and didn't have anyone that was that close to me. I knew that I, I needed someone by my side, but it was very hard to believe that a relationship would end well, that I would have a happy ending because there was so much disappointment. I was very afraid to be in a relationship and and be hurt after that. I had few experiences as well that were not good, but of course, with Carla, everything was, was different, you no? Know? And I met her in a workplace. I When I saw her for the first time, she was, very you no know, beautiful i liked her her appearance and so on but the most that i liked about her was what people had to say about her people that used to work with her you know her colleagues at work um her family members friends they used to to say good things about her you should see her very dedicated in her workplace the way that she used to do things and she used to stand out around all of those that were there yeah with me it was a little bit different right um, I had great principles. My parents were an example to me. Um, I've never had any problems at home. And there was a point in my life that, I, like he had said, I needed somebody there by my side. I wanted to do more things and I knew that if I had a man that is good, that we both would grow together. And I remember it was at work, um, a friend of mine told me about him. I, I didn't know, he had been there for some time, but I never noticed him. And a friend told me three times, and I said, no, he's not the type of guy, because I've always had my dreams. You know, you write there, you want a tall man, everything on the outer side, it wasn't him. I said, no, this is not the one that I asked for. It's not the one that I you know I dreamed of. And I remember that. She used to imagine Tom Cruise, <laughs> Brad Pitt, this kind of guy, no, so. Really. <laughs> yeah, so then after some time, I said, no, it passed like three, four months, and he was persistent. He went to my father and he said, look, I want to speak to your daughter. So I remember it was a Wednesday. I don't forget. It was in July. I never forget. 2014. He came and he said, look, there is a guy that wants to speak to you. And I said, um, who is it? And when he said it was, I said, no, sorry, you know, no, I'm not interested. And then I said, tell him to wait. Tell him, just wait one more week and I'll make my decision. 
So I didn't tell him to say it directly to him, but he went and he told him, look, she said, can you wait for a week? And she's going to make her decision. And for me, that showed that he valued me. And you know, we women, we like to be valued. And that was the first thing that caught my attention. I didn't like his appearance at first. But when Don't that action, <laughs> when then he took that action for me, it caught my attention straight away. Look, he respects my decision. And yes, I do want to speak to you. Then that was just an assurance that yes, he was the one for me. And I remember then we started to talk. We went to Costa and we spoke for like, what, half an hour or so, yeah. like even less than that. And everything that I dreamed in a man with his character was exactly what I had written down with exactly who he was and even more. So that just from the second day of speaking to him, I started to like him even more and I wanted to speak to him even more, get to know each other. And that's where our story began, you know. So in, in today, nine months, you got married. Yeah, no, we months. start when, after that date. No, in nine months, you were married. relationship Noah is very beautiful Noah, um, Noah I, I met her parents she met my family as well in the day of our wedding because my family is in another country but everything happened smoothly and, and our wedding was, was very beautiful she sang to me yeah. <laughs> I have to hold myself not to cry but it was, was so beautiful no, it was a dream coming true and I see that my relationship with her is different from any other relationship I have I have seen you know, in my family and was was worth you know, trying because we are not only focusing the feelings and the emotions but as we learn you knowing the love talk you no know, um, love intelligently is the, the key secret you no know, to be happy in the love life because our relationship is not only based on our emotions on our feelings but in our thoughts in our mind in, in not only about what feel like doing but the things that are right to do you know, and and these have been value, valuable teachings, no? That have helped our, our marriage, our relationship to, to be good and better every single day. Everything has to go in the right way. If you want it to last, we have to do everything in the right way. So that's my key. And also, how long have you been married for? So three years <laughs> and a half. You know, and has very been. happy. We like to go out, you know, to, to eat out as well, you know, and in our free time, we we go to the movies, you no, know, we always you know watch a movie together. She in the beginning she didn't like to watch much movies and I am a movie lover, she is a popcorn lover. <laughs> so we made we made an agreement. Every time we go to the movies I buy her some popcorn and, and she's fine. When her popcorn is over, sometimes she sleeps, sometimes you no know, she she turns to the other side, but at least we are together, enjoying a moment together. So Usually in our day off, we always go to the movies together. No, sometimes watch one, two. The maximum was three movies in the same day. But we are move lovers. And today, the Love Talk team invited us to go on a different date. No, we were invited to go to Zebra Ceramics and to do some painting you know, on a piece of ceramic and afterwards give us a gift to one another. So, do you accept the challenge? Would like to go? I'm very excited to learn something new and to come out of our comfort zone, right? So, so. let's go into it. Yes, let's go. <laughs> So we finally arrived here, knowing Zebra Ceramics, and we are about to learn something new, something that we never did before, and we are really excited about that. Yes, I'm very excited to learn something new and spend time with my love. <laughs> so what we're going to do today then? Okay, so at Zebra Ceramics we do pottery painting. We're quite well known for um, turning something as plain as that into something as beautiful and shiny as this. I'm going to show you how to create something really lovely there. So um, basically we have all the paints 
um, on this mug here, all the colours that we have. Mm -hmm. They match those pots of paints over there. Uh, the colours change in the kiln, so mm -hmm. what we suggest you do is start with one colour, mm -hmm. squeeze a little bit of paint in, so choose a colour that you like, and I'm sure it's all about love, so red's going to be part of it. Yes. Um, so, as you notice, the colours do look very different. Squeeze a little bit of paint in there. Mm -hmm. um, Paint what you need to do on this mark, and when you finish with that colour, wash the brush, dry the brush on the tissue paper, look on the mug, choose the next colour, and go keep going till you've decorated your mug as beautifully as you like. Um, we then, you leave it with us, and we will glaze it and fire it and put it in our kilns. And when you get it back, it will be as beautiful and bright and shiny as this one, and then you can use it. Yeah, very nice. So I hope you're feeling very creative. <laughs> yes. Good, We've good. Never done it before, no, that's all right. That, that's not a problem at all. We're going to get you something that you'll enjoy doing. Are you painting for each other? Yes. Yes. Super. So Carla loves Super. coffee, so I'm going to make a very nice mug so that nice. when I prepare her coffee, it's going to be even nicer. It, there we go. So I'm looking forward to your design. <laughs> I'm done. So, what have you done? Ta da! Uh, so sweet of you. But look at the mess that she did. After, they always say that the men is disorganized. When the mess, you look at hers. Look at mine. Hmm? All neat and tidy. Okay, but... so tell me, what did you do for me? What did you do for me? So, here it shows, first of all, it's for you, but for you, whenever you drink from it, you remember me. So, you know, I have a very bubbly character, right? Mm -hmm. So here I have written a little bit of things that will that represents you. So I said to my love, and I said that I love you even more every day. Mm. Says you're brave, sweet, loving, and caring. Yeah, I am you're the one smart. that the cockroaches, the insects yeah. when they fly into their hair. <laughs> you're smart and strong. Okay. Then I put here the date, so whenever you drink from it, you're going to remember all the things that I admire about you. Okay, so here is mine, look at this. So we have here spring full of fruits, summer full of leaves and life. I have here tree in autumn, all the, you know, the, the, the leaves falling and no, no orange, red. And the last one, a very dry, no tree. A dry one representing the winter. So my love grows for you in every season. So that's what it means. You know that in winter, that's when the tree grows, you know, in the roots. It's the moment that no one sees the tree growing. We don't see fruits, don't see leaves, don't see anything there. But the tree is growing underneath. You see that the next spring will always be better. And there'll be always more fruit and more flowers than the season before. Because winter, when no one is saying, growing more so even in hard moments I, I learned how to love you. Aww, so, this is for you. Thank you very much. And this is for you. <laughs> Thank you. 
So Anna, I believe the show, at least for me, was amazing. How for me you? too, yeah. So it showed that all couples can and actually should, should do something together. Of course. To eliminate the bad routine. And create a new good routine. Good ones, right? To keep the relationship healthy. And it's not complicated, right? No. Just From pick small something that, gestures, yeah. you can do it. Yeah, right? they can pick something that both like and enjoy and haven't done it for a long time and just take the time to actually do it, right? We know that when you are in a long-lasting relationship, it's easier to fall into a bad routine. However, through a bit of effort, your relationship can be so vibrant no matter how many years you have been together. That's why you have to work hard in your relationship. You need to invest and dedicate yourself to it. Now, with all the ideas, tips and knowledge we've shared today, it's time for you to break the bad routine and to make the best of your relationship. So, plan today, enjoy tomorrow. No excuse. If you don't have time, you make time. We'll come back next week with more Love Talk. Bye-bye. See you then. This program is brought to you by UCKG.